In 2001, we witnessed one of the more lopsided NBA Finals. The Eastern Conference champions Philadelphia 76ers were facing off against the champs from the West, the Los Angeles Lakers. Somehow, someway, behind Allen Iverson's 48 points, they managed to win game one of the finals. But after that, it was over. There was only one man who could generate any type of offense for the Sixers and against Kobe and Shaq, it just wasn't enough. The strategy of the 76ers was pretty obvious. Let Iverson get his and surround him with defensive stoppers. Yet nobody mentioned that the majority of them defensive stoppers were aging. And basketball has never been a one-man's game. Your offense has to come from somewhere. In the end, with all due respect to Allen Iverson and Dikembe Mutombo, what we got was one of the worst teams in the NBA Finals. Hey guys, Purple Prince here and today let's look at the 2001 Philadelphia 76ers and what happened to all of their players after the 2001 NBA Finals. George Lynch George Lynch was the 76ers starting small forward during the 2001 regular season and in 32.3 minutes per game was able to contribute with only 8.4 points. He barely played in the finals. In two games he scored only one basket and grabbed a total of five boards. After the 2001 season George went to Charlotte Hornets for a year and then played in New Orleans for three more years, never averaging more than 4.8 points per game. For his career in the NBA, George Lynch holds averages of 6.6 .6 points and 5 rebounds. Rodney Buford Back then, the 23-year-old small forward wasn't more than a deep reserve player. During the regular season, he played just 12.2 minutes per game and in the finals, in three games, was able to collect a total of 13 minutes, 2 points and 6 rebounds. Next season, he had an opportunity to start some games for the newly established Memphis Grizzlies, and that was his best season actually. In 28.1 minutes per game, he averaged 9.4 points and 4.3 rebounds. His best season didn't result in a new contract in the NBA, so instead, he went to Greece for a year. After one season in Europe, he returned to the NBA and played two more seasons, one for Sacramento and one for New Jersey Nets. He was out of the NBA at age 27. For his career, Buford averaged 6.4 points and 2.6 rebounds. Kevin Ollie. If you haven't heard his name before, shame on you, as during his career, Kevin Ollie played for 12 different franchises. As impressive as it is, it also means that nobody really wants you that bad. During the 2001 regular season, Ali averaged just 3.8 points, and in the finals he was round in all 5 games, but played a total of 14 minutes and collected 5 points and 1 assist. The journeyman point guard then, in a span of just 3 years, played for Chicago, Indiana, Milwaukee, Seattle and Cleveland, before settling for 4 more seasons with Philadelphia. Then, at age 36 during the 2009 season, he played for the Timberwolves before going to OKC for his final season in 2010. If you're wondering why I didn't mention any stats, well, that's because there's nothing to mention. For his career, that actually spanned 662 games, which I guess is an accomplishment in itself, Ali averaged 3.8 points and 2.3 assists. Jermaine Jones the second year small forward was a small contributor during the regular season and in the finals his contributions became even smaller. During the regular season Jones was able to average 4.7 points, while in the finals that number plummeted to only 2 points. A guy who averaged 2 points actually started 4 out of 5 finals games. Let that sink in. His career did have better moments though. After the 2001 finals, Jones joined Cleveland where he got more minutes and contributed with 9 points and 5.6 rebounds. Then a useless stop in Boston, then the Lakers and Charlotte where he had his best season averaging 10.5 points and 4.9 rebounds. His last season in the NBA came at age 27, in Phoenix, when in 18 games he averaged 2.2 points. For his whole career, Jermaine Jones holds averages of 7.1 points and 4.2 rebounds. Todd McCulloch Big Mac was a 7-foot center who played sparingly during the Sixers 2001 run. During regular season, in 9.5 minutes per game, McCulloch averaged 4.1 points and 2.7 rebounds. In the finals, however, he was barely on the court. In 5 finals games, he accounted for a total of just 31 minutes and averaged 2.6 points and 1.4 rebounds. 
After the finals, he went to New Jersey Nets where he became the starting center for the team and was able to carve out his best pro season averaging 9.7 points and 6.1 boards in 24.2 minutes. After his breakout season with the Nets, he returned to Philadelphia for what would be the final season of his NBA career. As a starting center, he averaged 7.1 points and 4.7 boards. For his career, McCulloch averaged 6.1 points and 4 rebounds. Raja Bell The 2001 season was Bell's first gig in the NBA. He played in only 5 regular season games for an average of 1 points, and he played 5 games in the NBA Finals as well. In extended minutes, he managed to shoot just 30% from the field and averaged 2.6 points. He spent one more year in Philadelphia with no meaningful contributions and then moved to Dallas for a season, also with nothing really worth mentioning. His career really kicked off in Utah, where he was trusted more and ultimately got to even start some games. In two seasons there, Raja Bell averaged double-digit points both seasons. Then he moved to Phoenix, where he enjoyed the prime of his career. He became a three-point shooting machine and even made two all-defensive teams. Phoenix's fast play style really benefited him, but after three seasons there, he was traded to Charlotte. Soon after, he was traded to the Warriors, but played only one game for them. In 2010, he signed a three-year contract to return to Utah, but after two seasons, was waived by the team. Bell retired in 2014. Matt Geiger The 7-foot center was already on the downside of his career when he joined Philadelphia for the 1999 NBA season. He slowly lost the starting spot and by 2001 was only a deep reserve. During the regular season, Geiger averaged 6.1 points and 4 rebounds, but in the finals, he was limited to just 10.7 minutes per game in which he averaged 5.2 points and 1 rebound. Geiger's career was pretty much over right after the NBA Finals, as he played just four more games next season. Knee injuries forced him to retire in 2002. Throughout his career, Matt Geiger averaged 9.2 points and 5.7 rebounds. Tyron Hill Ok, now we get to the top 5 contributors. One of which was the 6'9 power forward, Tyron Hill. He had a good regular season for the Sixers, averaging 9.6 points and 9 rebounds, and was supposed to be one of the players to help Sixers win the title. In the finals though, he was underwhelming. Just 6.6 .6 points and 6.6 .6 rebounds and a 39.4% success mark from the field. He continued his strong rebounding next year for the Cleveland Cavaliers, averaging double-digit rebounds for the fourth time in his career, but after an underwhelming start to the 2003 season, he was sent back to Philadelphia. At 34 years of age, he just wasn't the same player anymore. He finished the 2003 season in Philadelphia before moving to Miami for the 2004 season, where he played only 5 games. In total, he played 801 games in the NBA, was a one-time All-Star and averaged 9.4 points and 8.6 rebounds. Aaron McKee Aaron McKee was Philadelphia's go-to option from the bench during the 2001 regular season. He was a versatile player and averaged 11.6 points, 5 assists and 4 rebounds, which was enough to win the 2001 Sixth Man of the Year award. In the finals though, he was a starter that disappointed. In a whopping 41.3 minutes per game, he was able to contribute with only 8 points, 6 assists and 5.4 rebounds and an atrocious 31.4% shooting from the field. He stayed in Philadelphia for 4 more seasons, filling up the 6th man role but never returned to his glory days. After the 2005 season, McKee went to the Los Angeles Lakers, where he mostly sat on the bench, participating in only 24 games throughout 2 seasons. For his career, Aaron McKee averaged 7.4 points, 3.3 rebounds and 2.7 assists. Eric Snow Philadelphia's starting point guard averaged 9.8 points and 7.4 assists for the 2001 regular season. In the playoffs, he improved to 12.6 points per game, but that just wasn't enough. If you watched my first video on the worst finals teams, you probably remember that Eric Snow was also a member of that horrible 2007 Cavaliers finals team such as life. After the 2001 finals, Snow stayed in Philadelphia for three more seasons, averaging double-digit points in each of them. Then he moved on to Cleveland, where his career essentially died. In Cleveland, 
he was still starting but played much less and never even averaged 5 points per season. He spent 4 seasons in Cleveland before calling it quits because of a knee problem. For his career, Snow averaged 6.8 points and 5 assists. Dikembe Matumbo Matumbo was once one of the most feared rim presences in the NBA. Unfortunately, by the time he landed in Philadelphia, he was already 34 and on the downside of his career. He started his 2001 season in Atlanta, but at the trade deadline got traded to Philadelphia, where he finished strong averaging 11.7 points, 12.4 boards and 2.5 blocks in 26 games. In the finals, he was even better, just not the prime Dikembe anymore. In 41.6 minutes, he averaged 16.8 points, 12.2 rebounds and 2.2 blocks. Even though it would seem that his career was almost over, it really wasn't. Matumbo spent one more year in Philadelphia before opting for a more of a bench role through the rest of his career. He played one season in New Jersey and one in New York. But did he retire after that? No. He played five more seasons with the Houston Rockets and was still in the league at age 42. Well, his name was, but Matumbo was only a shell of his former self. He retired after playing just 9 games in the 2009 season. Matumbo is the second all-time leader in blocks and for his career averaged 9.8 points, 10.3 rebounds and 2.8 blocks per game. And the superstar of the squad obviously was Allen Iverson. More of a shooting guard throughout his career, Iverson had a great 2001 regular season. He led the league in points with 31.1 and steals with 2.5. He also won the regular season MVP and All-Star Game MVP. In the 2001 NBA Finals, Iverson played an average of 47.8 minutes. 47.8 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. He averaged 35.6 points, 5.6 rebounds and 3.8 assists. In the very first game, he scored 48 points and the Sixers won. He was that good video game like numbers, although throughout the series he wasn't too efficient, shooting 40.7% from the field and just 28.2% from the three. Still, he single-handedly carried that team, but it just wasn't enough. Iverson played for the Sixers up until 2006-2007 season when he got traded to the Denver Nuggets. Denver had another great scorer in Carmelo Anthony, so Iverson wasn't the number one option anymore. Additionally, he was aging and that just didn't go well with him. After just 135 games in Denver, Iverson was traded to Detroit. Detroit was no fun either. He lost playing time to Rodney Stuckey and eventually, after just 54 games, was sat down for the remainder of the 2009 season. Iverson signed with the Grizzlies for the 2010 season, but after just 3 games, his contract was terminated by mutual agreement. Iverson returned to the Philadelphia Sixers but played just 25 games for the team before leaving the 76ers indefinitely because of his daughter's health issues. He didn't return for the 2010 season and as a matter of fact never stepped a foot on the NBA court again. Iverson tried to play some basketball in Europe but that lasted only 10 games and after a couple of years of not playing anywhere in 2013, Iverson retired from basketball. Allen Iverson played 914 NBA games, is a one-time MVP, four-time NBA scoring champion and 11-time NBA All-Star. For his career, Iverson averaged 26.7 points and 6.2 assists. So that was the 2001 Philadelphia Sixers finals team. Thanks for watching the video guys. How bad was this team in your opinion and which player of this squad had the most disappointing performance in the finals? please leave a comment below. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Thanks, I'll see you soon. This is Purple Prince and I am out. With one name, Jules ain't the slain anything on this plane. Remains are found when the best kept secret get heated. You went platinum with a ghostwriter, so in the game you won, you cheated.